Hey everyone, welcome to the Ken Geek Games and Collectibles YouTube channel. Today we are talking about one of the deck builders in the room. Today we're talking about Star Realms. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Scott here from Can Geek Games and Collectibles. Welcome as always to the Can Geek YouTube channel. Now, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I love Magic the Gathering. I love playing Magic the Gathering. But my biggest challenge over the past few years has been finding people to play MTG with. Now, one of the most common complaints that I hear from people regarding Magic the Gathering is that Magic has become a pay-to-win game. Now, if you're not familiar with that concept, it's actually very simple. You can have a group of friends sitting down at a table to play, you know, semi-friendly game of Magic the Gathering. Everybody's built a 60-card deck, but they've built them out of more or less common cards. All it takes is for one individual to show up at the table who has gone out and bought higher-end, rare, and mythic cards to completely unbalance what was intended to be a friendly game of Magic. And we are, you know, specifically talking about people that are going to go out and buy really unbalanced, overpowered cards. And that's really all it takes to wreck that gaming experience for some people. These are the type of people who, you know, number one, have the money to be able to afford to do this. And number two, quite frankly, are showing up at every game of Magic they sit down to play with the explicit purpose of winning by any means necessary. So that has turned off a lot of people I know that used to sit down and play Magic. That is where deck builders come into play. Deck builders like Star Realms because the beauty of this is, very simply, everything you need to play this game is in this small little box. There are no extra cards that you have to run out and purchase. Nothing is overpowered or disjointed. The entire outcome of the game is based on the decisions you make while playing the game without having any, you know, overpowered, unbalanced uber cards that someone drops on the table. Now the nice thing about Star Realms, especially for me as a long-term Magic player, is that this game, its foundations are actually rooted in Magic the Gathering. Published by White Wizard Games, Star Realms was released in 2013, but the game was designed by two former Magic the Gathering world champions, that being Robert Dougherty and uh, Darwin Castle. So, when you sit down to play a game of Star Realms, it is impossible to miss the influences that Magic the Gathering has had on this game. The mechanics feel very much like a Magic the Gathering game. And maybe that's one of the things that drew me to this game in the first place. Now, instead of trying to explain it to you, I would rather show you what a game of Star Realms looks like. So, let's have a look. So for those of you that have never played a deck building game before, I figure the best way to explain Star Realms to you is to give you a example of the basic layout of the game. So what you're looking at in front of you here is the basic starting layout of any Star Realms game. Now, each player will start with a deck of 10 cards, which is right here. 
and a small deck of double-sided numbered cards meant to represent your total life in the game. Now, this deck right here represents 50 life. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So 50 points of life. Now, I'm just going to put these back because they will become important as this goes on. So we have our 50 points of life here and we have our 10 starting cards. Now, whichever player goes first, we'll start by drawing four cards from their pickup pile. So for the purposes of this, we will say that I'm going to go first against my opponent. So I'm going to move my life counting cards over here. And I'm going to draw my four cards. So I have one point of currency, two points of currency, three, nope, uh, one point of damage. And my fourth card would also be a point of currency. So I have three points of currency to spend and one point of damage. So I'm going to start by dealing one point of damage to my opponent across the table who would then promptly discard from 50 life to 40 life. Or sorry, to 49 life. So there we go. My point of damage has been discarded. Now I'm going to spend my three points of currency. In this area here, you will notice a variety of cards. This is referred to as the trade row. This is where you will make your purchases from to build your deck throughout the course of the game. Now, there are multiple cards in this trade row. We're going to start by looking at this. This card is an explorer card. Now... The way this card works, you purchase it for two points of currency, as is evident from this number up here. That's how much it costs to buy the card. And then this card either allows you to get two points of currency or to scrap it, meaning remove it from the game, and deal two additional points of damage to your opponent. Now, if I was buying this card right now, I would buy it. I would have one point of currency left. This would also have to go into my discard pile. It is not usable until I draw whenever I happen to draw it next. Now, looking at the other cards that are out here on the table, you'll notice that there are four different colored cards. These cards are meant to represent the four major factions in this game. Now, each faction has its own unique abilities to either lend support to your attempt to win the game or some disadvantages, if not played properly, that could ultimately cost you the game. So, looking at the four factions, the green faction represents the blob faction. You'll notice we have two of those cards on the table right now. Uh, we will actually move this card just this way for a minute because I'm going to come back and explain that card to you in a minute. So we have two Blob Faction cards. We have a Trade Federation Faction card. We have the Star Empire Faction. And then the red card at the end is the Machine Coat Faction. Now, these... Factions, as I just said, allow you to utilize certain abilities. Before I spend my currency, we're going to look at this Blob Faction card. The Blob Wheel is actually a base meant to defend you against attacking opponents. So you will notice that this does one point of damage to my opponent and there is a white shield in the bottom right hand corner of the card representing five points of damage. So, I'm going to buy this card. There's my three points of currency spent. All of this goes into my discard pile right there. I flip 
another card from this deck and I put it in the Blob Wheels place. Now my trade row once again has five cards and it is my opponent's turn to go. Now for the purposes of this video we're going to assume that my opponent has gone. They've made some purchases from the um, the trade row. Maybe they've dealt some damage to me and now it's my turn to go again. So I'm going to draw my five cards. So I'm drawing one currency, two, three, four, five. Now I have five pieces of currency to spend from the trade row. And you know what? I'm really liking this card. We're going to go with the Blob Fighter, which will cost me one to buy. So I pick it up. I discard it. I now have four points of currency left to spend. I flip another card. And we have the Imperial Frigate. But you know what? I want another Blob Fighter. So I'm going to buy that. Or sorry, the trade pod, pardon me. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to discard it. I'm going to flip another card. I now have three points of currency left to spend. And you know what? I think... Well, I can't afford Mech World, unfortunately. But we're going to talk about Mech World right now just the same. Previously, I purchased a blob base. Um, you know what? Let's just find it quickly just to show you what it was. I purchased this, the blob wheel, which had a white shield for five points of defense. You will notice that this one has a black shield for six points of defense. It is important to note that when you have these bases in play in front of you, your opponent has the choice on whether or not they will attack a base that has a white shield. If you have a base with a black shield in front of you, your opponent does not get a choice. They must attack the base with the black shield before they can attack you. So when playing this game whenever possible you want these types of bases with the black shield. They're the ones that will do the most good for you. Now we're going to put that back in my discard pile that I've shown you that. We're going to put that there. I still have three points of currency to spend. I only picked up a couple of uh, one point blob purchases. And you know what? I'm liking, well, let's say, we'll take this. We'll take the Imperial Frigate and we'll call that my turn. Well, after I do this, of course. So there we go. That's my turn. Now we've come back around to my third turn in the game. Uh, my opponent has hypothetically made some purchases, done a few more points of damage to me. We'll say maybe I'm down to 40 points now. And I have to draw five more cards. So this is my first of five cards. I've shuffled my deck. I have to draw four more cards. So we'll start here. I have one point of damage. And then I have that. I have that. I have this and I have this. So to begin with, I'm going to do two points of damage to my opponent sitting across from me on the table. They take their two points. We discard these. Now, these are very important. Faction cards of the same faction complement each other. They are extremely important that when you start playing this game, you are building cards based on cards that will complement each other. So we have the blob wheel here. You will notice it does one point of damage. It has my five points of defense. It would be better if it was a black shield. It's not no big deal. I'm going to put that down. 
My opponent takes another point of damage, so now instead of having taken two points, my opponent takes three points. However, I also have the Trade Pod, another Blob Faction card, and I have the Blob Fighter. Now, cards that have symbols like this one right here on it mean that if you have another card of the same faction in play, this card gives you an extra ability. So, you will remember I've already done two points of damage to my opponent. I've done another point of damage to them from here. They are going to take another three points of damage from this card. Okay, so now they're up to a total of six points. And I get to draw another card because I have two Blob Faction cards in play at the same time. But, oh wait, there's more. There's this. I also have three points of currency and oh look, another Blob Faction card in play. So now my opponent is taking an additional two points of damage on top of the three points of currency I get from this card. So all totaled right now, even though I haven't drawn my extra card yet, my opponent sitting across the table from me has now taken one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight points of damage just by having these cards in play. I'm going to draw the one extra card that I get to draw as a result of this. I've drawn a piece of currency, so my opponent takes his eight points. I now have four points of currency to spend. And you know what? I'm working off the Blob Faction right now, so I think we're going to buy this for, you know, one point. I now have two points left to spend. And just for the purposes of this, I will buy a Explorer and call that my turn. I've now flipped my card to put it back in the trade row from here. I'm calling that my turn. These get discarded. This gets discarded. This stays in play until it is destroyed by my opponent. And that's my turn. And that is more or less how the game of Star Realms is played. So here's the key points I want to leave everyone with where Star Realms is concerned. The game is meant to be played quickly. Um, the walkthrough that I just gave you wasn't quick and you know I apologize for a couple of mistakes I made. As you may have just discovered for example I suck at math. Um, but the game itself is meant to be played quickly. So your success or lack thereof in the game will be determined by the type of faction cards you purchase from the trade route and your ability to play them properly. You do not want to get stuck with basic attack cards and you don't want to get stuck with basic currency cards. You want to get rid of those cards as quickly as possible and by getting rid of them I mean removing them from your hand in the game. That is accomplished for example by buying some of the machine coat cards. Those cards when played properly will give you abilities including scrapping cards from your hand or your discard pile. You want to get rid of your basic level cards as fast as possible because as I just showed you a lot of the cards as you start purchasing them have multiple abilities that build off each other. The other point I want to leave you with is make sure that you pick a main faction that works for you and then maybe build off of that faction with a secondary faction. That's what I find works well for me. So for example, I am a huge fan of the Trade Federation cards and the Star Empire cards. And then, you know, when I've got a lot of those cards in my hand that are working off each other, I will buy some of the Blob Faction cards in order to get rid of the 
cheap garbagey cards I don't want in my hand. So again, Star Realms is meant to be played quick. It's meant to provide you and the people you're playing with with high speed, adrenaline boosting enjoyment. Um, the game itself is best played, at least in my opinion, as a two player game. Now, having said that, though, in the rules, there are alternative ways of playing that allow you to incorporate up to six players in the game. Everything from uh, Hydra to Emperor. So if you do have more people that want to play the game with you, don't fret. You can sit down and have up to six people playing. But I really do find the game plays best as a two-player game. I think really that's what it was designed for. Now, I'd love to hear your comments below. You know, if you like deck building games, I'd actually love to hear what deck builders you enjoy playing. You know, recommend some of your favorite games to me here as well. Um, initially, this video was going to be a walkthrough of both Star Realms and Hero Realms. However, I think we're going to do a Hero Realms video separately. And it's because although the games are designed by the same individuals and, you know, they kind of play the same, Hero Realms has a different feel to it. And I think it's a game that has been supported, at least in my opinion, a lot better than what Star Realms has. So that's going to be a different video for a different day. Uh, until then, thank you very much as always for joining us here on the Can Geek Games and Collectibles YouTube channel. I hope that we will see you back here again soon. And until then, get out there, play some games, and ciao for now.